Hey Cottonwood fam, Pastor Sam here, and today we're gonna go around the plaza. We're gonna find out what's on people's minds when we talk about discipleship. See if they can explain it to us. All right, let's go. Discipleship is kind of taking someone and helping them become a follower of Christ. I believe that that happens through relationship. I cannot stress that more just through becoming friends with someone, um, walking alongside them, being available to them, relationship, relationship, relationship. Beautiful, that's an awesome way to define discipleship for us today. Thanks, Ty. Nice jacket. Here are some of the Cottonwood Young Adults. Shout out to Cottonwood CYA. Woo! Woo! Discipleship is being Jesus to other people. We are his hands and his feet on the earth. Beautiful, Sarah. I think it could be about reaching out even when it's uncomfortable. Um, reaching out to people that are non-believers, praying with people who might be a little bit uncomfortable for it, being the hands and feet of the Lord. I think simply put, it is honoring God in everything you do. Woo! We have some more of the Cottonwood fam here. This might be cheating because they are part of Cottonwood College. Can you explain to us what is discipleship? Um, the way I think of discipleship is it's just the long-term following of Jesus that uh, makes us more Christ-like over time. Beautiful. Yeah, I think it's just other Jesus followers helping other Jesus other followers follow Jesus, yeah. I guess. Yeah, I know that's a weird way of saying it, but yeah, that's what I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> Literally dropped the mic. Can you explain to us what discipleship is? Uh, reaching out to the lost. That's what comes to me. Walking in obedience and, and doing what Jesus asks us to do. Amen, my man. Uh, discipleship to me would be uh, being in one with another brother or sister and fellowshipping and learning, teaching each other how to walk with Christ and being there for support. Uh, to me, it's like a type of mentorship, I'd say, with God's word as the focus. Being able to uh, be accountable to other people in your kind of circle of friends or not even your circle of friends, people at work and things like that. Just to be, be able to keep people accountable using God's word as the focus yeah. and guiding. Yeah. Discipleship is coming alongside people wherever they're at in this stage of life and helping them to understand the things of not only God, but also understanding how they are uniquely created and how they're wired and to uh, give to the world. That's it. Shut it down. That's, that's what it is right there. We are called to not only look like Jesus, but also to make what he made. Disciples. And while most of us struggle with even being a disciple, the thought of making disciples can seem out of reach. We may label it as something reserved for pastors or teachers or someone who's gifted in a special way. But this is not a calling for the perfect, but rather a life for the obedient. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make. Hey everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Unpacked. This is a part of a five-part series on disciple making, and we're very excited just for you to be able to experience what God has for you. And this is going to be experienced in a way that perhaps is different than what you're used to. You may usually watch Unpacked maybe from your office or maybe from wherever you might as an individual, but this series is meant to be experienced as a community. You may even have community leaders now communicating to you how they're going to do that. But even if you're not a part of a community, don't worry. At the end of the episode, we will have more information, but we're really stoked to be able to experience this together. And speaking of together, in this episode, I'm joined by Pastor Gabriel Rodriguez. How are you doing, Pastor Gabriel? I'm doing good. Pastor Gabriel is our Global Mobilization Director. That's a mouthful. Pastor Gabe, what does that mean? Basically, I get the opportunity to work with teams, build teams, to send them all over the world uh, to our different partners that we have. Awesome. And besides that, Pastor Gabe is just my really, really good friend. In fact, just a cool little trivia note, uh, he actually married my wife and I, and so I'm very grateful for him. But in this episode, we are going to cover what it looks like to be a disciple. What is a disciple? What's a disciple of Jesus? What is disciple making? We're actually going to lay a foundation and really allow your communities to be able to discuss this amongst themselves. But more importantly, we hope that you get the heart of this episode. The fact that disciple making is for every follower of Jesus. There's no outs. It's basically what we're all called to. And then by the end of the episode, we'll give you a preview 
of the next four episodes to come through the pattern of disciple making. So Pastor Gabe, what I want to do is I want to read a uh, famous passage of scripture where kind of people point to, to where this calling comes from. It's from Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read verses 19 through 20. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he makes this claim. But even before we go to the context of what Jesus was talking about specifically, let's take a look at just the word disciples. It was a familiar word back then that they used to describe it, that Jesus used to describe it. So what in the world is a disciple? Yeah, disciple, sometimes we might think it's just like a student, somebody that's just going to download information. But it's way more than that. It's actually somebody putting it into action. Uh, think of it maybe as like an apprentice or maybe you've worked with an intern before. When they come in, yeah. they're going to uh, observe you. They're going to work alongside you. You're going to give them projects, and then they're going to be able to do it. And just like that, the apprentice uh, of Jesus is, or the apprentice of, of just Scripture, you're looking at it of what am I learning, and then what am I putting into practice? Yeah, it makes me think of when, you know, my dad's a tool and die maker, but for many of you, you're like, what the heck is that? He's really just a, a really great machinist. But even in the trade of being a machinist, he would describe to me the apprenticeship program that he went through. He talked about how he went to night school first to learn. And for many of us, we may think like, well, that's where the apprentice starts. Well, not really. That's where he learned about the trade. Then he worked alongside someone who was like basically a master. And then he applied for the apprenticeship program. And he's for a couple of years just really just watching, mimicking, watching, mimicking, discussing what's going on and learning the craft before, until he basically completed his apprenticeship program, at which time you get your journeyman's card. Now you can kind of go and work anywhere. And now it's like, you know, I think like 40 years into the trade. Now he's basically a master at it and it is his craft. But that is what we're talking about when we're talking about the word disciple. A disciple is learning and following someone by practicing in order to become. It's not just head knowledge. And so when we talk about that being a disciple, Pastor Gabe, what does a disciple of Jesus then mean? A disciple of Jesus is we are becoming more and more like him. I know a lot of times in church culture, it's like, wait, no, no, it's grace. It's grace. It's just God doing the work. But there's a great quote that I've heard recently by Dallas Willard, and it says that grace isn't opposed to effort, it's opposed to earning. Because earning is an attitude, but effort is an action. That's great. And there's actually a verse that really kind of brings this out, and it's found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. I think so often we'll look at that verse and we may think, oh, I just have to be more love or I have to go and do more love or kind of conjure up joy or peace in my life. But rather when we're a disciple of Jesus and when we're becoming more and more like Him, yeah. It is the byproduct of us abiding with him. It's a byproduct of us living in that lifestyle, and it comes out. Um, it doesn't just happen by us conjuring it up or mustering the, the energy to, to go out there and show more joy. Yeah, and in a similar way that my father, like let's say he in, entered that apprenticeship program to where he's observing a master, practicing with the master. It's the same thing when it comes to apprenticing with Jesus, being a disciple of Christ. We are able to observe him through his word. We're able to be able to observe him through his spirit. It says that the spirit of God has been placed within us, but also through his people, yeah. that his people gives us examples. And that's why the family of God is so important when it comes to this topic of disciples. Yeah, and it's, you know, when you're learning on the job, somebody's there to coach you along for the mistakes. Mm. So it's like we can make those mistakes um, with them and they can redirect us. It's not us just on our own going about it yeah. just by ourselves. But if we are with people, 
um, they can kind of correct us or they can lead us and and show us, oh, actually, this is the way, you, you know, you do the machinery. Then yes. You want to look out for this thing, you know, you do this wrong, you lose a finger, you know? <laughs> it's like you got somebody there showing you, working it with you, so you're not on your own. Yeah, and then even in the word family, we would easily be able to understand how there's people who are younger and older and at different maturity levels. But it's the same thing when it comes to the family of God, that there's just people at different parts in their journey. Doesn't mean that they're better than you, but we need each other. And so that's why it's so vitally important that we not only need to apprentice underneath Jesus, but we need to apprentice also with other believers. That's why when Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, be imitators of me as I imitate Christ, it's this pattern that you see where it's like Paul's insane. I'm perfect. Like, yeah. copy me. <laughs> like, you know, like he would be saying, I'm chief of sinners. But he's saying, like you said, it's, it's not the effort. It's, it's, it's that intent. It's that leaning in. Like, I have devoted my life to observing Christ and practicing his ways. Whatever I have to give, practice with me. Yeah, and Paul, even in that saying mm-hmm. of follow me as I follow Christ, he also leaves us an out. Like if he were to mess up or if he were to go off track, it's like, no, you still stay on Christ, yeah. you know, but in me following him, follow me as I am doing this. If I ever get off track, you keep going with Christ. Mm-hmm. So there's also, you know, that thought aspect behind yeah. it. Now, for most of us, we might say amen and agree up to this point. Um, we know that this is a bit of a struggle sometimes in being a disciple of Christ, you know, whether it has to do with the flesh or just our own propensities even just life in general. But disciples, being a disciple is a part of a bigger process, meaning it's not the end. In fact, when Jesus said, go and make disciples, that is the aim. And so I want to even park right there for a second, Pastor Gabe, and what is at the heart of becoming a disciple maker? I think if you break it all down, at the end of the day, it's people but not just um, any people. It's actually people that you get to journey with in their process of following Jesus. And we don't just um, tell them what to do. It's not, I am the master. You are the... You know, the lower the lower person that just does what I say. The Padawan. Yeah, the Padawan. <laughs> it's actually somebody that we gain experience from, that we learn from. Mm-hmm. I know in my life, there are even a few couples that have come into my life recently that you actually introduced us to through another community here. And we were just having dinner not too long ago. And we spent like two hours just laughing at different people's stories, mm-hmm. um, you know, where they came from, where they grew up. And in learning about them, I learn more. And it stretches me in my faith. I see where they're at. So it's not just this, oh, you do what I say. I'm going to teach you everything. I'm going to fix you. No, you're learning from them. You share and experience life with people. Yeah. I want to read to you a verse of scripture that for me is the heart of this disciple making. And really it came from one of my mentors, uh, Pastor John Kim. Colossians 1.28 says this, Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom, that w- may that we may present everyone mature in Christ. He's saying that's the point. That's why we're doing this. We want to be able to present everyone mature. And when I think of that phrase, they would have known even in the agricultural sense, like there's a maturity when it comes to fruit, when it comes to trees. I have a little orange tree in my backyard that that you've seen. And for me, you know, I'm always trying to keep up to date with, okay, what do I need to be doing? What season is it? And so, you know, how how much should I be watering in this season? Is it time to prune? Is it time to fertilize? Um, Oh, those flies are back. Like, I need to get rid of these pests. And why am I doing all of those things with intention? It's because I want to bear not only fruit, but I want to bear a lot of fruit. And so I'm going through all of those cycles, but you can see how even in that kind of metaphorical, you know, case study that it's kind of a pattern of really like even why we do what we do. It's like when you read from Galatians and you read the fruits of the spirit, the way that we're changed on the inside, we want to see that in people. And it's like, all right, like as my friend Gabe, like, hey man, I think that has to be pruned, bro. Like, I think we need to be watered together. Hey, that pest is coming around again. Like we do this because we want there to be much fruit. Yeah, you can catch it in people's language. You yeah. can catch it in the way they talk to their spouse or even in just their actions. And you're able to say, hey, uh, you might need to look at that, <laughs> you know. Um, but yes, we want to see people mature. We want to see 
people's victories. We get to experience those victories with them. Yeah. But then also we get to be there in the heartaches as yeah. well. You know, That's good. I think something that I want to leave with you is a, even just a simple definition for myself is that disciple making is apprentices inviting people to be apprentices. Did you catch that? It's like, it's, it can't just go both ways. It's not like we're some master, not that we are and are not that we're not. It's, am I underneath someone receiving? Am I also giving an opportunity for someone to receive from me? And, and you'd be astonished that no matter where you're at in your walk with God, there is always someone that can receive life from you. Why? Because life is in you. God said, no man is good except for God, but God has been placed in us. Therefore, there is good in us to give. And so I just challenge you that each one of us needs something like that because the thing that we want you to walk away with today is that disciple making is for every follower. And you may ask, why is that so? Why is disciple making for every follower? Why is disciple making for me? You may have heard this said that the great commission is not the great suggestion. It isn't like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, like, amen. Like, you know, we'll let Pastor Gabe do that with this whole global mobilization, whatever it is, you know, or people who are zealous, like, like I'll champion them. Like, no, it's for every single person. And I want you to even rehear a familiar verse of scripture. Matthew chapter four, verse 19, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, I know it's very simple, but let's think about that for a second. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He's saying, if you do this, I will do this. There's no other option. Jesus makes every follower a fisherman, a fisher of men. There is no other byproduct. You know, you've heard Pastor Harrison say before, if we're not fishing, are we really following? If we do our part, Jesus says, this is what I will do. I will, in your heart, give you the compassion and the desire to be able to go after people, to draw them to me, and to play a part in them starting to look like Christ. Yeah, and we also think about the people in this context. Rabbis, that was their job. Yeah. A rabbi wanted to teach his students to be exactly like them. It was to get his followers to imitate them. Mm. And you can only do that by doing it closely. Yeah. You can't do it, you know, if, if I don't see... Uh, if I only see you at work, um, I only experience that part of you, but I may not see what you're, what's going on at home. And so as Jesus is saying that, he's actually declaring like, hey, I'm going to, while you follow me, I'm going to do the work yeah. and you will develop in what I'm doing. You're going to do exactly what I'm doing. You're going to influence people. You're going to uh, draw people to you for the purpose of discipling. Okay. Are you ready now? Because buckle up, we're going to actually get into where we all live. Pastor Gabe, here's a question I really want to get down to the bottom of, because I don't know about you, maybe you're all better than Pastor Robert and Pastor Gabe, but, but here's the question. Why don't we make disciples as a lifestyle? Why don't we do this? What in the world gets in the way, even though we know the messages, we hear the scripture, it's like, I don't know about you, maybe y'all are doing this. Maybe in your community, Awesome. I want to I want to peer into that model. But as a general rule, why don't we make disciples as a lifestyle, Pastor Ian? I think we allow the thoughts and arguments in our head to be our roadblocks. Mm -hmm. uh, we may have the thought, you may be watching and maybe your first time, you're like, I didn't even know I was supposed to do this. <laughs> Nobody ever told me. Um, and so you're finding that out right now. And, and with that, God is here to help us. He's going to show us. He's going to guide us. Like he said, follow me and I will make you. He's going to do the work. He's going to help you mm -hmm. through that. I know one argument or one thought that I've often uh, stops me in different areas of my life, not only this one, but what if I don't know the answer to the question that they're asking? Mm -hmm. You know, that will, that will stop me even with my kids. If they have questions, there may be conversations I need to have with them. And I, I kind of will st hesitate because I'm thinking about this. Mm -hmm. But even if we don't know the answer, that's okay because we're still learning and we can journey and find it together. Yeah. Imagine that, you know, I don't, you ask me a question, I don't know, but then we take the time to, to dig it out and yeah. find out whatever it may be. We can go on our phones, Google, uh, put, you know, try to look for a question and there's all the answers, but we do it together. And there's actually humility in that mm. of us knowing, you know what, I may not know it all, 
but that's okay because Jesus is going to help me. That's good. Some of you may be watching right now and you may be answering the fundamental question. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, Robert, but, but but what about me? Like, what about my life? Like, seriously, I feel like I'm just treading water. Like, where's the person who's going to pour into me? Like, I feel like I'm not seen. I feel like I got so much that I'm trying to juggle between school and work and paying bills. Some of you are raising young families and you're just like, Rate, like make disciples like you know what I mean like can someone disciple me and I just want to encourage you that I know that could seem daunting and a lot of it has to do with just as Pastor Gabe was saying the revelation and the experience that comes from starting to journey even just what's the first step for you inside of a community to talk about this kind of stuff to maybe even voice the questions that you've had on the inside who's the person discipling me Raise that question up with your community leaders. If you're not a part of a community, we'll give you information at the end on how to get connected. But the idea is don't keep it on the inside. Don't keep it on the other end of a YouTube channel where you're just watching this by yourself. Get connected and begin to have these conversations because you cannot look through scripture and see an individualistic walk with God in a vacuum. It doesn't exist. It is always brother and brother, sister and sister, in the kingdom of God, walking together, imperfect, different levels of maturity. And so if that's you and you just feel overwhelmed, and you're like, what about me? I just encourage you. There is a, there is an answer for your cry, but it comes through community. Yeah. It's amazing how all those questions will just stop us when we're by ourselves. Mm. But if we actually pose that question that's to our community, good. they can actually help us walk through it. You know, if we just, I know you've probably had conversations in your head before you've had the conversation. You're like, if they say this, this is what I'm going to say. If they say this. But we allow those questions or we allow those comments that we're thinking about to slow us down, for us to hesitate. But if we're in a community, it's amazing how somebody else may walk us through that question or that answer, and we learn and we're able to process, and then it doesn't hold us back. Yeah, and then maybe some of you even right now where perhaps you, um, maybe at one season of life, you did this. And you're like, Robert, I, I got photo albums <laughs> of, of like pictures of people that I discipled and ministries that I did, and, and really, you're blessed by it. And, and as you share the story, you bless others. But honestly, they've just become a photo album, a memoir in the past. And, and maybe you're an empty nester. Maybe you're older in life. Maybe you have a little bit more going on in terms of responsibilities or maybe even just a lot of liberty and leisure time right now. Or maybe just the whole COVID experience has really just made you put an arm's length at ministry. And really, disciple making has just kind of taken the back seat. Can I just encourage you? God has already accounted for every season in the existence of mankind, and disciple-making doesn't have an asterisk around 2022. It's like, oh, we're going to, you know, put that on the shelf, you know, during COVID. It's like, no, there is a way that God can reveal to our hearts. God, who in my world? Even if it's just one, like, disciple-making always usually occurs one-to-one, one-to-two, one, one to very small numbers. Who can you put in my world, God, just to share something with. Perhaps it's in your community. Perhaps it's already someone even in your physical community. But your time's not done. Your time is now. Maybe some of you have something being birthed on the inside of you, something you've been praying through, but there's just no outlet. Once again, have you talked with your community leaders? Have you find out, have you prayed about it and, and tried, God, you've got to reveal this to me because I feel like this has to get out. I need, I need to be able to pour this into somebody. Journey with your community and see if there's a way to act now because the time is now for that disciple making. You may even have somebody in your home. Mm. You know, uh, we know that parents, a lot of parents had to become uh, teachers yeah. at home. And it's like, maybe this is the time that God allotted for us to teach our children. Maybe it's a cousin that lives with you or yeah, uh, a family member. I know growing up, we always had family members that lived with us. <laughs> so there was always somebody in our home that maybe it was like God setting that up for us to have time to be one-on-one, -on -one, to have time to journey with them right where they're at. It could be your next door neighbor. You know, I, I, there's neighbors that yeah. weren't able to get out. And it's like, you can still have that connection with somebody that's watering their grass or cutting their grass or gardening. And, and maybe that's what God was doing in this time was setting us up yeah. for people that were close to us, but we weren't close to them. That's so good. I know that I can get excited about the thought of making disciples. And then I go and look at my kids and I'm like, 
Natalie, you take them. You know what I mean? It's just like, but it's so true. The home is like really the first ministry and really our neighbors is kind of like that first entryway point. But we really hope that you hear our hearts in this, that there is so much at stake. Sometimes we don't understand what truly, what truly is at stake if we don't do this. You know, the scripture is very, you know, descriptive and explicit about this. First thing at stake is literally souls. You know, Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, he says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. There is so many people hanging in the balance. Not that we're their savior, but it's like, God, what can I do? You know, like Isaiah said, Lord, send me. How can I play a role in someone's life? And not just souls, but maturity is at stake. In the writers of Hebrews, they wrote that there was this form of arrested development. I'll read it to you in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 from the New Living Translation. It says, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teachers. You ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things of, God, of God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. What's he describing? He's describing a dynamic of arrested development where it's just like you can be in church for 30 years and still not grow past a certain point. He's like, he came back and he's like, you should actually be teaching this to other people now. I actually think that's proof enough for myself to recognize that, yes, there is the gift of teaching, but every believer has the ability to impart something to someone. You don't have to speak well. You don't have to be a theologian. For the writer of Hebrews to come back to a community in faith and says like, hold up. Like, you should have been sharing this with someone by now. That's pretty convicting for me. Yeah. That, that tells me, like, wow, this disciple-making, no one escapes this. This is what we have at stake. It should always be going on. Absolutely. It doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And it can start right when we start following Jesus as well. Yeah. It's like, hey, you can actually get started now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to wait. And the thing that I really had to consider in preparation for this episode and be honest was, for me, the thing that's most at stake, besides just the souls and the maturity, which is huge, is a version of Christianity that was never meant to be for us. What do you mean by that, Robert? If we never engage with this call that we have on the inside of us as children of God to be able to make disciples, to partner with Christ, honestly, I've been in seasons of my life where I've been left wanting, like empty. Like, is this all there is to Christianity? Show up, receive, feel good, leave. Show up, receive, feel good, leave. It's like a vessel that keeps on getting poured, but it never actually does what it was meant to do. And that's pour out to others. It's, it's, a, it's a version I would hate for you, your communities, our church, I think, ever experience. Yeah, I think along with that is you miss out on experiencing more of Jesus. Because the whole thing is we are following yes. him. He's yes. saying, follow me. So he is the target. Yeah. He is the end line. He is the goal. And when we don't put this into practice, we're actually missing out on being with Jesus. Yeah. We're actually missing out on learning from him, learning more about ourselves as he is developing us because he says, I will make you. So as we're following him, he then is able to do a work in us. That's great. That's great. Even when I was thinking about this, just kind of a, a closing illustration, I was thinking about, God, what is this like? And it reminded me, like, when COVID hit, everything was closed down. But people who had this regiment of going to the gym were, like, climbing up the walls. And people were buying, you know, equipment to work out at home. And when the gyms finally opened, it's like they didn't care what they had to do, like, masking up, or they're like passively pass, passing out on equipment, but it's like people wanted to get in the gym. But then there's gym goers, and then there's non-gym goers, if you know what I mean. No conviction, <laughs> no condemnation in Christ. But I thought about it like this, that when it comes to a gym, a membership helps you enter. A trainer helps you practice, but a trainer of trainers helps you become. Did you catch that? We're not called to just have a membership with God. Like, oh, thank God I'm saved. I can enter the church. Like, you know, hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. Like, hey, I'm glad if that's happened in your life, honestly. Like, that is an amazing gift of God that we get to be with him. But we're not just called to have a membership. We're not called to even just be healthy by ourselves. Have a trainer 
the Holy Spirit and the Word of God tell us how to be able to live and go and do it, that we're spiritually fit and we feel good, that's not the end. We're to be a trainer of trainers, to actually become the type of person that's helping the people in the house of God develop and grow healthy. And I hope you understand that. I hope you hear us. No matter how difficult it is for you to see yourself like that, you are a trainer of trainers. You're a disciple maker. It is the very lifeblood that flows through you. So with as difficult as, and as challenging perhaps as that, this kind of a, a topic and truth is, Pastor Gabe, I, I would just want to know if you had any parting and encouraging thoughts for our communities. Yeah, I just wanted to um, share this thought of hope. You know, King David pens these words in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And no matter if you've just started, maybe you just started coming to church, maybe you're just tuning in and you're just starting this journey, you need a shepherd. Mm. Maybe you've been at this for 30 plus years. Like Robert said, you know, you have all these disciples and people you've poured into, but guess what? You still need a shepherd. And he has provided all those things for us. Jesus has talked about in the New Testament as our good shepherd. Mm. He's leading us, he's guiding you. And at the end of that Psalms 23, David pens these words, and I will shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. David knew who his shepherd was and that a shepherd provided a place for him, mm. a place for him to give, a place for him to mm. receive, a place for him to grow, a place for him to belong, and a place for him to share. And God has provided that in our local community, in our local church. First, we have a shepherd, and he's provided a place for us. That's great. And if for some reason, like I said, you you don't have that place in a community, maybe you've attended Cottonwood for quite some time and just haven't really stepped out, or or for whatever reason, maybe you're brand new and you're like, community, what the heck is that? I mean, I know the word, but is that some type of program? That's just a word that we use to describe all the different areas and ministries of our church where we have come from a larger setting, like on the weekend services, and come to a much smaller gathering, and even much smaller within those formats, so that in small groups we're able to discuss this, you know, in a very, to where people know our name, people know our story. You know, there's communities such as women's and men's and young adults and Celebrate Recovery and young marrieds and all different types. There's endless lists. But if you are not a part of a community, there will be a link on the screen that you can click on, and it'll direct you in order to uh, be plugged in and get connected and even get more information. So I encourage you, if you're part of a regular community, just go ahead and follow the series with us. Jot down notes. Like I said, your community leaders will be in contact with you and find a way to weave this into your experience. So we invite you to use this as a tool. And before we pray, I just wanted to even give a preview for the next episodes to come because we are really excited for what's to come. Not because we got something really to impart that we think is like, oh, you're going to be awesome, but really because you get to talk with your community about this. Really, when you watch this with your community and you talk, you know what you're doing? You're actually doing first steps of disciple making. You're opening up your world and your heart to other believers and saying, what do I think about this? God, what do you think about this? And we just encourage you to do that. And so I just encourage you. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In the coming episodes, we will break down these different phases, phases of invitation, where it has a lot to do with not only Christ inviting you, but about you inviting others. And that's so intimidating, but we're going to demystify that whole thing. uh, Hopefully, we're going to take all the intimidation away and we're going to help you. How do you prepare your story? Tune in for the next episode. We're going to have fun with that. We're also going to talk about imitation, as Paul said. But what do we specifically imitate? What are we really imitating in Christ? We're going to talk about duplication. Basically, how do you practically get an apprentice and be an apprentice of someone? That's a really big word and intimidating to us, but we're going to prove to you in that episode that apprenticeship has actually been a part of your life for as long as you've been alive. In fact, most of what you've learned has come through the lens of apprenticeship and you can do it with anything in life and especially spiritual matters. And then we'll end on the maturation aspect of this phase. How do we journey with people in maturity while we're still maturing? It's like, we're still novices, but it's like, how do we bring people along? There are obstacles to that. So we're gonna 
face those obstacles head on and hopefully help each other in our communities. But with that, Pastor Gabe, I'd be honored if you'd pray for our communities and ask God to bless us. Yeah, you might be hesitant. So I'm just going to pray over you right now that God's going to give us the courage. He's going to give us the the ways and open the doors for us. So Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for the things that we've learned, for the things that we've heard, maybe things that we had never heard before. We didn't know that this is what we were supposed to do. And I thank you that you give us the courage, you give us the strength, you give us the relationships, the friendships, you open doors for us to find community, to find where we can do this with other people. And if you don't have somebody that you're being discipled by, Lord, we ask that you would bring that person into their lives. And we thank you for the things that you're gonna do in and through their lives, through discipleship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching Cottonwood Church's YouTube channel. Uh, We pray that today you've been pointed to Jesus. And maybe you want to take some next steps in following Jesus. You can actually text the word HOPE to 605-405, and uh, it'd be the quickest way for you to be able to get connected one-on-one with a pastor, uh, or as well, so that we can send you a free book. And since you're here on the channel, why don't you take a moment and just click that subscribe button. And maybe you want to support the church financially. Maybe you want to give. You can actually uh, click the give button there or, or, or click the link that is in the description. Thank you so much. Check out our channel, all the different videos that are here. We pray that you would be blessed. We pray that you would be pointed to Jesus. Hey, and until next time, we love you and we can't wait to see you.